watched the wrong program on Cable News Network or just about any program on fixed news this week, you might have heard that the stimulus bill contained a secret provision creating a new government bureaucracy empowered to overrule your doctor's decisions about your health. Our fourth story tonight, a health report, the anatomy of a smear. On Monday, Bloomberg News ran a commentary by former New York Lieutenant Governor Betsy McCoy. Among her claims, the bill would create, quote, one new bureaucracy, the National Coordinator of Health Information Technology, to reduce costs and, quote, guide, unquote, your doctor's decisions. The National Coordinator of Health Information Technology secretly slipped into the stimulus bill. Scary. Scary enough for red type at the Drudge Report. The government telling your doctor what to do. Scary. Scary enough for comedian Rush Limbaugh to flog it on his radio show. With Rush and especially Drudge transmitting the fear virus, CNN and Fix News quickly succumbed. But the bill goes much further on page 442. It explicitly says that the government will be delivering information to your doctor at bedside, quote, to guide decisions at the time and place of care at the time and place of care. So in fact, this is going to be a two-way system. Your medical treatments will be stored in the database, but the government will also be communicating with your doctor at the time and place of care. Uh -oh. There's a reason she's no longer Lieutenant Governor of New York. First, the information was not, quote, to guide decisions. It was, quote, to help guide medical decisions. And information is not provided at bedside, but made available so that your doctor will have it whenever he or she has to make decisions. Here's the full relevant passage, not the cherry-picked one from the former lieutenant governor. The health coordinator's office, quote, provides appropriate information to help guide medical decisions at the time and place of care. To CNN's credit, its medical correspondent challenged McCoy's claim, but the network itself still dignified debate over it as controversy. Lou Dobbs didn't even go that far. Oh, and the new National Coordinator of Health Information, meet David Brailer, hired in 2004 by President Bush as the National Coordinator of Health Information. But if the anatomy of this smear reveals the tendons of Rush and Drudge, maybe more the guts, connecting blatant lies about stuff anybody could check out online to a circus on Fox and even a controversy on CNN. What about the evolution of the smear? Betsy McCoy is an adjunct senior fellow at the Hudson Institute, a think tank funded by, wait for it, drug companies, drugstore chains, and biomedical suppliers, whose former trustee once ran the same health insurance group whose Harry and Louise ad helped to torpedo health care in the 90s. McCoy herself wrote to the pharmaceutical trade group Pharma, quote, asking Pharma to support my work at the Hudson Institute because my writings on health care policy can make a substantial difference in public opinion and in the nation's capital. And on that note, joining us now, Lawrence O'Donnell, a contributor at HuffingtonPost.com, who had a front row seat as Harry and Louise did their thing when he was chief of staff for Senate Finance Committee under Senator Moynihan. Uh, good evening, sir. Good to be with you, Keith. And Betsy McCoy emerged as a health care policy analyst back then during the uh, Clinton health care bill with I, a big article she did uh, trying to take that one apart. I was just going to say, does any of this sound familiar? Betsy McCoy basically offering herself up to sell crap on behalf of the big pharmacological interests? I was wondering when she was going to emerge this time around, Keith, and we now have it. Uh, but her scholarship, and that is a far too dignified word to use for her Bloomberg piece, uh, couldn't be more ridiculous this time around. As you pointed out, she's uh, shocked that this bill creates a position that has been up and running for years now. And then she goes on to make uh, to, to pretend that there is... Uh, that, there, that the government isn't already making coverage decisions. It does. And she, uh, she condemns Tom Daschle's book for suggesting that the government should do it uh, more, more carefully and in a more streamlined way, and then pretends to quote from it when she's quoting two or three words at a time. I, I just want to read one quote from Daschle's book that doesn't appear in her coverage, and this is what he's concerned about in the book. He says that under Medicare, national coverage decisions are made by the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services but CMS, which doesn't weigh cost-effectiveness, only hands down about two dozen decisions a year. <laughs> the remaining 90% of Medicare coverage decisions are issued by roughly 50 fiscal intermediaries and insurance carriers scattered around the country. Tom Daschle would like to streamline that. Betsy McCoy apparently thinks that's just fine. Uh, I think we, can, we know the answer about this relative to Drudge and Fox. 
But Bloomberg News and CNN, did any of them have red flags to question the McCoy's level of credibility or at least potential conflicts of interest or even, as you pointed out, just the, the, the narrow focus of her history stepping in on behalf of Big Pharma in, in any kind of medical issue? Well, Matt Drudge leans right. We all know that. So he loved uh, this kind of article coming out. And, of course, he ran with it uh, very quickly. And, and Rush keys off of Drudge. It's uh, pretty easy to sit there and keep uh, Drudge's page up there to get through his three hours every day. And neither one of them know anything about health care policy. They certainly don't know more than Betsy McCoy. They know dramatically less. And so they saw what they needed in there, the red meat they needed to run with it. And I, I don't think the people at CNN making the decisions about what goes on the air even understand and uh, Betsy McCoy's history in this territory or what, what, how empty that article was. They, I mean, they clearly didn't. Uh, you'd think Rush would know everything anybody could know about Big Pharma. We'll, we'll just skip the rest of that. But ultimately, what is, what is, what is that industry's interest in killing the stimulus? Well, it's a heavily regulated industry, and they're, what they're, what the thing they fear the most, and I had a lot of dealings uh, with them on, at the, in the Finance Committee, it, the thing they fear the most is price regulation. Uh. And that's the thing that they know Americans are most nervous about, is the cost of their products. And so they will almost always come out against any kind of health care reform that's coming down the road, because at some point in the legislative process, they fear a heavier regulation on them getting into that bill. And they are right to fear it. And so uh, what What's shocking about tonight's report, Keith, and you revealed something that I did not know, was that Betsy McCoy had sold out mm -hmm. in writing to the pharmaceutical industry, begging them for money long before she sat down to write this op-ed piece, which does serve their interests. Because what she's setting up here this week is not the campaign against the stimulus bill, the campaign against Obama health care reform. She's out to kill it very clearly. Well, at least uh, her uh, political identification and her uh, fact that she's a basically a paid by extension employee of the pharmacy, pharmacy industry, pharmacological interest industry has been established. Uh, our own Lawrence O'Donnell. Thank you, sir. Thanks, Keith.